and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as Four Kids at One Four Seven. Happy eighth of June, everybody. Um, so let's have a look at which one we're doing today. Eight. Oh, we are still being joined up. Um, so we're doing number eight, which is up here. So I am going to pin this to my light pad using these little clips, which really they're small, but they don't half hold it. <laughs> In fact, if I pull it hard enough, it moves my easel rather than moving the canvas. So let's have a look. What have we got? So I'm going to try and straighten this up now according to the square above. This number two is a little bit bigger. It is sort of overhanging on each side. And then let's... Ooh, we actually have two different, two different widths on these. So I'm going to put that up there, but I'm... In fact, no. I'm actually just going to cut out that corner piece. And we'll just have a wonky corner here. It'll all look the same anyway. So we can make it work. Oh, looks like we're going to get a little bit of purple in this one as well, which should be fun. And we have got some more of the glow in the dark diamonds. I'm trying to think what I'm going to do first. I might do, there's quite a few different sort of sections within this. So I think I'm going to do all these, these bits that are sort of the sections and or this bit around the outside, and then I'll go around filling in each of the colours. Let's do that. So we'll start with Y, which is a dark grey, and we'll fill that in around. Now the pen I'm using today is another pen that I got from Lazen Lathe Works. There will be a few of them. <laughs> that appear over these whipping chats because I have had a few from them. Um, I do have some from other companies as well and I will be using them in future days. I actually don't think I have 30 pens, which is probably a good thing. Um, but I'm gonna, I've, I've pulled all the pens out that I can find. I do still think there is a couple that maybe Megan has borrowed or maybe they're in my cart and I just need to find them properly. So I'll see how far I can actually get with individual pens each day. Um, but some of them are acrylic, some of them aren't, some of them are handmade, some of them are more mass produced. But I have a few different ones to choose from. But this one is Lays and Lathe Works and I do have the Everlasting Tips, both the full one in the end and this is where my second straightener is at the moment. I may need to get some more of them. I do like to use a straightener. I do find quite often I can end up using it on a, on a painting at some point minimum. So it will be nice to potentially have some more. I have seen some people put in links in the Facebook group to other sellers of them. So maybe I will give them a go and see how they fit compared to the actual brand Everlasting Tips and how theirs fit. I will move on to the questions. I'm just going to have a look and see if I have finished all of the why or not. I do apologise if you keep hearing the beeping. In fact, let me turn that down. There we go. Let me mute the beeping. I don't know why I haven't done that before. I'm so used to just hearing it when my Mac is open. Um, okay, so I think I've got all of the whys. I'll get the H out and we'll zoom in 
and then I can move the laptop a little bit closer to me and just make it a little bit easier to read. So we move that over there and then we'll zoom you in. See if I need to move my easel so that you get a good view. I think you can still see the top of it there. Um, but I'm going to do all these bits that are around first. So all the bitty bits for a change before I go into the others. Um, so Shimmy Dancer, she likes the ABs. That's good. I like the ABs spread about as well. Um, she asks, do you ever use glue, top, glue dots instead of wax in your pen tips? So far, I haven't, though I have heard good things about using glue dots. And I think that is something that I'm going to test soon. I do have some glue dots in, in my sort of adhesive section in my craft room, um, but they are bigger. So I have actually used them to make sure that these pen tips stay stuck in the pen, but I've never put them on the other end. And I have heard that there's sort of really tiny micro ones are best for that. I mean, I could cut up the ones that I have, um, but it is something I do plan on giving a go in the future. But it's sort of something that if I wanna give it a go, I'm gonna give it a go on camera. I'm just gonna put some more wax in this pen because I don't think I've put any wax in it for a bit. Um, and yeah, I've just not got round to doing it while doing a video, which I think is, is sometimes what stops me doing stuff is getting round to actually doing it on a video. Um, oh, and she also asks, what do you suggest for somebody starting to want, wanting to start, get my words out, a YouTube channel? Um, for somebody wanting to start a YouTube channel, I think the first thing you've, you've got to decide is, is, are you doing it because you enjoy it? You need to be able to enjoy the process before actually you know diving into starting a YouTube channel is the first thing. It is not something that will bring you in any sort of you know money straight off. It is something that has to build. It is something that people have to like and keep coming back to. Otherwise it will never be more than a hobby. If you enjoy it and then it takes off after that absolutely fantastic you know that's great that's sort of what's happened with this channel but there was a good couple of years of doing this channel as a pure hobby before that happened um, and I still enjoyed it so you need to enjoy it first after that the one thing I probably suggest the most is to try and get nice lighting. Um, you know, I used to film on my phone. If you don't need a fancy camera or anything, um, it can be a benefit going forward, but it's definitely not something that you need to start. Many phones now have absolutely fantastic cameras in them that means you really don't need to be spending the money on a camera, it's not a requirement. But I do suggest that you try and get the best lighting that you can. Um, it can sometimes be off putting if there's a lot of shadows that appear on a video. And yeah, it, it can make people not be able to see what it is that you're doing properly um, and yeah that's probably the first thing I'd, I'd start off with make sure it's something that you're going to enjoy doing and make sure that you have good lighting is probably the best tip and then you know do think about what it is 
you know, that you want the goal to be. Um, I mean, this can always change. So, you know, the, the goal of what you want to do on your channel, what you what you enjoy doing, because you are doing it as, as a hobby. And yeah, go from there, go for it. Um, oh, Diana said Margaret is awesome with the uh, sending the ABs. She is. Um, she did tell us that they did come from Sophie's Beauty on AliExpress. Now, this question may have been asked after I or before I actually answered that question. Um, but they did come from Sophie's Beauty on AliExpress. Oh, and she's doing the same numbers that I am. I do love it when people are doing the same same numbers it's it, it's not a must at, in any way but it is sometimes nice to see other people's pictures coming together but still being different and I think that's what I like um yeah a few of these a few of these questions or comments at the moment have come in and I've since discussed parts of them but I am working from the oldest question I'm working my way up so that I get to cover every question. But somebody did say they're not a fan of the that many A-B drills together, which I'm the same, so I've changed it. <laughs> so somebody has asked, when you go to Australia, do you worry about the bad poisonous snakes there? Um and they, it's every time they see a TV show, they talk about them being everywhere. I think there may be some states that, that the snakes are more prominent or there is more chance of them being seen. It's not as, it, it's not really something that is a big deal in, oh, I have got more else, um, in the, the state that my parents are in. Now, it may be that it is in some places, maybe that are a bit more rural, but seeing as my my family tend to live in, in a more suburban area, it's I've never seen a snake every time I've been there. I've seen spiders, though they're normally the harmless ones, um, with huge legs, the huntsmen's. Um, they tend to be the ones I've seen. Apart from that, unless we've gone to, you know, some sort of wildlife sanctuary, I haven't really seen any any of the many deadly animals, um, deadly animals and insects that you can find in Australia. Just tend to see huntsman spiders and lovely coloured birds. Is, is probably the most that I see and occasionally um, we'll see kangaroos especially if we go near Anglesey Golf Club there are quite a few kangaroos that that live there and bounce around and um, that tends to be all the wildlife that I see um, she did say she always wanted to go there but she's a little bit scared um, I it really, if you're going somewhere that is, is more built up, it is not a big thing. It is not something that will will be anywhere near as noticeable as you think. You know, even UK-wise, we can have animals and spiders that are deadly. They're very, very few and far between. And there might be more in Australia, but I think there's more in in the more rural places. That they're more prominent and more well it's more their their home isn't it it's their home over hours um in the rural areas um also is it safe to travel to the uk now after all the covid scares a lot of that depends on on your country whether they think it's safe to travel in in the uk um that the deaths are definitely down in relation to COVID, um, the figures that have been released. They're down. Cases are still a bit up and down, depending on what variant is prominent where. Um, but if, if you're unsure, 
you know, use this time to explore your own country is what I say. I think that's what we'll be doing for, you know, at least for this year and depend on how's it, how it goes, maybe for next year. We will just enjoy places in our own country until it is safe um, to move about because it's not only a matter of whether you do or don't want to catch something in another country, you also don't want to transport the illness unknowingly to another country. So I think we're going to stay as home birds for just, just a little bit longer until things have really settled down and there's no, no so much, not anywhere near as much of a thing as you are allowed or you aren't allowed to travel to certain countries. I know we've had countries that have been put on the green list where you don't have to self-isolate when you come back from them and it's changed to being on the amber list where you do have to self-isolate. And it's happened, you know, within a matter of of days or weeks, it's changed from one to another. I don't need that drama. I don't need or want that drama in my life. So I'm just going to stick with the UK for now and go from there. If somebody told me that, you know, I had to quarantine after you know, being in Wales and come four o'clock in the morning, you need to quarantine if you've been to Wales. Well, I can get myself home without paying inflated air prices. Um, same for Scotland. It's not the same if you're in another country at the time that it happens. Though I work from home, so maybe I'd just let myself be in quarantine when I got home. Um, Oh, so Josie has asked, does anyone get pain in their index finger after a diamond painting session? That's not something that I've noticed um, particularly. I don't know if it's maybe, Josie, the way you're holding the pen. I know it, it can take a lot. I know when diamond painting, especially when I first diamond painted, to not be, not feel like I needed to be as harsh and heavy handed with stuff. So you, you can see, I mean, some people are generally heavy handed anyway, but you can see some people when they put down diamonds and you can see them push, you can see them force the diamond on as though it needs to set into the canvas is probably the easiest way to describe it um, and it, it takes a bit to realize that you don't need to do that with diamond painting it's not something that you have to do um, you can just place it and believe me i tested it with this canvas so i'm quite quite light when i when i place down the diamonds on the canvas you know, I will still nudge them into place, but I'm not forcing them into a place. And it still took a bit for me to take some of the, the diamonds off that I either replaced with ABs or the one, the 820s that I took off the ABs and replaced them with, um, with the normal diamonds. They still took some shifting once they've been there for a day or so. So really don't feel as though, you know, you have to force down. And maybe that's why your index finger is, is feeling a little bit sore after it. So if, if I were you, if you do find that you've got that, I would possibly pay a little bit more attention to how you're holding your pen and how much pressure you're putting on your canvas while you're diamond painting. And maybe see if you can ease it up a little bit when you realise and then maybe after a little bit of practice it will just become second nature to you to not press down as hard and you'll find that it's a lot easier. Um, Stephanie has asked, have you ever been to Adelaide? Um, her daughter's friend is from there and stayed with them in the US. I haven't, no, I've not been to Adelaide. I have, 
I've been to Sydney twice. I've been to Brisbane. Um, I've been to Palm Cove. That was that was where my brother's wedding was. Apart from that, it's been Melbourne and surrounding areas around Melbourne. So basically where my family have lived and then day trips out around Melbourne. And I've been Melbourne, you know, the centre of Melbourne quite a few times. It's a nice day trip. We've taken it, you know, gone on the ferry and gone round Melbourne as well as driving into the to the city, as they call it, driving into the city. Um but no, I haven't actually been to Adelaide. My parents have friends in Adelaide, so they do go up um, a couple of times a year. Once or twice a year, dependent on, of course, COVID excluded. Um, but I've not. I've heard it's warmer up there, though. Um, okay, somebody has said they're beginning to see Notice an awful lot of ads in my Whip and Waffles. There shouldn't be too many unless YouTube have decided to sneak a few extras in. Um, it's, it's normally every 10 or 15 minutes or so, depending on the length of the video, that I do put adverts in because that is, you know, how I earn from my YouTube videos, but I do try not to make them too annoying in their um, in their amount. I know if I actually told YouTube to add them for me, it adds about four times as many adverts, um, and I definitely don't like that. It adds it adds one about every two three minutes, and that that to me is a bit extreme. Um, okay, so somebody said, oh, when you remove the drills from the canvas, do you wash the drills to remove any leftover glue? If they were diamonds that I needed, so for example, if I had placed a lot of diamonds in the wrong place, and wasn't able to take them off and put them where they needed to go because um, maybe I placed the wrong colour and I needed them for further up the canvas then yes I would they do get they do get residue of glue for definite on the diamonds because I didn't need to use them again on this canvas I just took them off. I was going to put them back in with the other diamonds, but it will end up with sticky residue all over the place. Um, but I decided it wasn't worth the extra time, in addition to removing them all, <coughs> to wash them all as well. So I took the cheats away and I got rid. Um, oh, AJM, do your children diamond paint? Yes and no. Um, so there's a bit of a mixture, but I do have four, four children, so there's, there's bound to be a mixture in there somewhere. Um, my eldest, Megan, she does diamond paint. She has appeared on this channel a few times. She has currently got a, a couple on the go. She's very itching to do more. She's trying to give herself or you know, remember to allow herself more time to do diamond painting and to enjoy it. She does enjoy diamond painting. Um, my second eldest, Karis, she has done a little bit. Um, she's done a couple, but a lot of the time she just really doesn't have the time or as much of a crafty inclination you know she it's not that she doesn't enjoy it it's just not her first choice to spend her spare um so she has she has done some in the past but it's not something that she constantly has one on the go however she does have a few um in my craft room should she decide she wants to do any 
she can always pick one up. My son doesn't have the inclination for it apart from I did a custom that he asked me to get done for his bedroom um, of, of a film that he loves, an anime film and he wanted to place a diamond on it so he placed one and then off he went he was then happy for me to do the rest of it for him so he could have it in his room but he wanted to be able to say he'd done a bit and then my youngest has done one or two of her own but again um she Catherine's similar to Karis in that way she does enjoy you know, when she does decide she wants to do it, she enjoys it as, as very much a every now and then craft. Um, she also has some one or two in in the craft room for her to be able to do if the mood takes her. But she's not a regular diamond painter like Megan and myself are. Um, Lady Dax, would you consider doing a red tray? We would consider doing a red tray there are so many colors out there that we would love to do and we think we're going to bring a, a lot of those colors to life in limited edition trays any color that is mentioned by anybody we will make sure that we note them down we can't say how soon because a lot depends on on how much work the printers are doing otherwise but we don't tend to give the printers a rest <laughs> if if we have built up a nice stock of our standard colors for the shop we tend to start putting it to work on an alternative color and um, that the first color the first color that we're going to bring out as a limited edition is on the go it did have to take a few days pause us to be able to catch up with some orders because the stock went but it is back on doing that limited edition colour again so there's there's no in relation to the limited colours I have no time frames for them at all I, I, I can't promise any time frames for any of the limited colours um, just be assured that we will get them out as soon as we can um, and all of your colours that, that you want will be noted down. And we will just work our way through them, getting as many trays as we can um, for any colours. And, you know, if, if any popular colours may appear a second time, um, but only after we've gone through the list first. So if you want in the first colour that we do, bear in mind we now have probably close to 10 different colour suggestions for the next lot of trays um, so it might be a while until the colour comes back round again. She does also ask would you consider doing a bit larger tray? At the moment I would say no, not in this design anyway because the benefit of this design is that you can hold it and um, if you have smaller hands you can hold it this way which means you can hold it anywhere that that suits you. In fact, I'll keep it turned around that way because my diamonds are on this side. And this is what I do often with this tray is I will work the, the first half of the tray and then I'll turn the tray around. Um, never say never, but at the moment we don't have any plans for a larger tray. Partly because compared to your standard tray you get in kits, this tray is already quite big in the amount of diamonds it will hold. And a larger tray would also take a lot more time to print. And therefore we wouldn't be able to get as many done, you know, as maybe demand could potentially be. Um, or you know, for doing one large tray, we'd miss out on doing two of these trays, um, which could affect how many we could um, get done. But we are looking at doing a smaller tray or a baby tray that is more similar in size to the tray you get in kits because some people do prefer the smaller tray. 
we are working on a design for that. It does need perfecting. It doesn't take half the time to print. It still takes a good couple of hours to print. Um, so we're, we're, we're testing that as and when we can, the design and doing a test print. Um, and that may be something that we are able to bring out alongside the others in the future. But a big tray for now is a no. But never say never. Um, we always try to accommodate what people want as much as we can, when we can. Um, Crazy Hello, have you considered doing trays in the silk colours? That is something that we have sort of looked into. Um, sometimes the printer or printing in a silk colour can be a little more temperamental or a little harder from, from what we've read so far. Um, so at the moment we're starting off with the colours that are easier for new 3D printer people to manage. Um, every, every day we're, we're learning and any time we end up with a, a misprinted tray we're learning on what it is that went wrong with it and, and how to fix it and we're, we're getting a lot more knowledgeable in the world of, of 3D printers. So that may be something that, you know, we, we try as a, as a limited edition color. And if we can get the settings to be tweaked right on the printers so that they print in the quality we're happy with, then yeah, well that will open up the scope to try even more colors. There's some really, really funky different you know printer filaments out there that we're quite excited to be able to try at some point we just need to or want to ensure that we keep the same quality because if we don't keep the same quality then we're not happy with them um, and yeah they'd, they'd never make it to the site probably <coughs> uh, what else have we got Oh, somebody else, there is a few people that have mentioned about mixing the A, B and the normal drills. Yep, yeah, that is maybe something that I may do in the future. I think I have enough A, B diamonds at the moment. I'm quite happy with the selection of A, B that I have on this painting. But I might consider it in a future one. Oh, and somebody did say, well, I missed a symbol. Yes, I did. Um, are you a fan of true crime stuff? Um, I'm more a fan of, of made up crime. If, if, is that even a thing? Yeah. Um, I like reading crime books, but more crime fiction books than true crime. Um, my second eldest, Karis, she loves the true crime. Um, and, well, not loves it in the fact that it should have happened in the first place, but... You know, when it has happened, she likes to watch the documentaries on it and, and how things happened and all that sort of stuff, which is probably why she has a criminology degree. It's probably where the interest came from. Um, is there any particular type of image you would never want to do as a diamond painting? Uh, there's probably a few. I mean, it's hard to say that it's a particular type of image um, and it's also hard to say never sometimes so I've not really got an interest in doing you know an image of a famous person for example that's not something that I would ever I could ever see well I say that I actually have one that I'll be unboxing soon that's a famous person mm, it's kind of different that one but like, I wouldn't see myself ever doing, for example, an Elvis Presley diamond painting. I have nothing against them. I have nothing against people that do them. And if somebody asked me to do one for them, then I would do it. Um, it just isn't a, an image that I would want to do just for the fun, I suppose. And there are a few images like that 
but I, you know, images of cars, images of both motorcycles. It's not what I would go straight to and go, oh yeah, I want to do a picture of that. No. But if somebody asked me to do it, I'd be more than happy to do it and I would enjoy the process. So it's a little bit of a, a tricky one, but I do enjoy doing the bright colours. The brighter colour paintings definitely excite me more. Um, Laurel has asked, where did you source the storage kit? So the storage that I'm using for this painting was actually gifted to me um, by a subscriber. But I do have a link to it on my website. So if you go to 4kids at 147.com, in our favourites, there is a storage section and this storage is linked in there. It is can Canada, um, Amazon, um, which is where the person who purchased it, me, bought it from. Is that even a sentence? I don't know anymore. Um, that's where she got it from. Um, but it, you may be able to use um, details in the, the listing from Amazon and the description and maybe even the image to do um, a search on Google in your own country and find it somewhere that, that ships to you. Uh, Dawn said, oh, here we go, we've got Canada again. <laughs> um, have you ever been to Canada? No, I haven't. Um, if not, would you like to? And if so, what part would you like to see? Yes, I would like to go to Canada. There are many countries I would love to visit um, and, you know, see different parts of the world. I thoroughly enjoy going and seeing different places, even if it's not, you know, even if it's a weekend or a, a short week. I do enjoy that. Which part of Canada? I actually don't know. I don't know enough about Canada to know where would be a good place to see um, or to go. But if that was ever something we were able to do, I would definitely do some research. I'm probably asking the Facebook group, <laughs> people that live there, where do I really need to see? Um, and have you considered adding a section in your journal for accessories to track where pens, glue, wax and storage was purchased. That's a good idea. That's definitely something we could look at. Um, you may be able to add that in, in a page in my stash. Um, you could always use the note page in the meantime to note down where they're from. But yeah, it's definitely something we'll look at. I'll ask um, Megan, the designer, to see if she can come up with some pages for detailing accessories and we can always look at doing that as an extra. That's the benefit of the logbook as well. If there is any extras that we could do, people can still add them in to the book that they've already got um, and, and, you know, and it still be a complete book because our logbook is the disc bound system. But yeah, I will... I will have a look and see. I don't think the columns would need to change very much from where we have the details for the canvas or for diamond paintings that you have in your have in your stash. But I'll have a think about what categories would be best to make sure that we've got in there. So you can still include, you know, some of the details, but of course not as much as as what's in the actual logbook side of things. Um, so Fee has asked, will you be trying the quad cubes from Row Diamonds in the future? Ooh, I've not heard of them. I'll have to go and, and have a nosy and see what they are. In fact, 
I have internet. Let's go to Row Diamonds. And let's see if I can find out what that is. Oh, I can search quad. What have we got? Was it quad she said? Quad cubes. Oh, I can't see anything when searching for quad. I can't see anything when searching for cube either. Unless it's something that they've not got yet or unless it's something that they've named differently on their site. I'm not sure. I can't answer that one, I'm sorry. I actually don't know what it is that the item is. Um, Fee also asks, if you won the lottery, what would your first five things you buy and why? Ooh, first five things. See, I know I've always thought, I mean, for years and years, you know, even when the lottery first came out and was available, you know, everybody has that little think of things that you do. And one of the first things I do, I don't know if this would class as buying, but I always wanted to, you know, look at look at maybe buying a, a bigger house. We are a big family. I would love to have a bit more space, though. You know, we, we have added space and it's, it's nowhere near as bad. We're nowhere near on top of each other as much as we were. But more space would always be good, even just the point of having a utility room to throw all the washing in and shut the door would be amazing. So I'd probably, actually buying a house would be one thing. But one of the other things I always wanted to do if it was a big amount, you know, of course, I'm not talking if it's £10. <coughs> but if it is a big amount, I would always like to pay off the mortgage of close family. You know, there would possibly be other things that we'd do, you know, maybe go on a family holiday or something. But one thing I always wanted to do is pay off somebody's mortgage. I think it, it's something that would help people month to month to have a little bit more money and also have the security of having you know their home paid for i've always seen that as something i'd like to do rather than just saying oh here's x amount it would be to just say okay what's the balance on your mortgage and pay it off um other than that I don't know if there's anything that's sort of big on my list. Um, if if we weren't in COVID times, then it would definitely be a family holiday to Australia would definitely be one of the things. And possibly family holidays to other countries as well. To sort of, you know, explore the world a little bit more. Other than that, really can't think of anything that is just a matter of yes I'd want to go and get that because a lot of the things at the moment that we're looking at you know either changing in the home or improving in the home um, wouldn't be something that we would necessarily spend money on and get as excited about if we were moving house so we have been looking at the likes of designing a new kitchen things like that well if you move in house that's not relevant anymore. So yeah, I can't think off the top of my head. I know my hobby would buy a car. He would very much buy a new car. So I suppose that could be classed. Um, we have joint finances, so that would that would be classed as, as a purchase for me as well, I'm guessing. Um, would be a new car for the hobby. Um, I mean, I'd drive, I'd probably buy myself one as well, maybe. I do love my little Corsa. I would probably take a little bit longer to purchase one for myself, 
seeing as I actually don't go out much um, due to COVID at the moment. But as soon as I was, you know, as soon as the country's back fully up and running, I'm sure I'd want a car too. It's only fair. Um, Oh, Susan has said if you go to Claire Trays, she does suggest to purchase the least amount you're able and to print them before investing. Um, only because she's purchased Clear Trays and been disappointed before. Okay, well, thank you for that, Susan. That is something that, you know, we would be testing if the quality isn't as nice as the trays that we already do, we more than likely wouldn't continue and then sell that colour. Or if we did, for any reason, we would explain why it's not as nice quality. I'm, I'm guessing that it needs printing at a higher um, temperature to ensure that it melts properly but yeah I think if, if we get that one we'll definitely make sure that we do quite a few test runs to ensure that it does print as nicely as as the other filaments that we have but it's good to know oh an orange tray or a clear tray if it's possible so yeah orange is a color that's on the list Oh, and somebody said, as soon as you said the last time that you wanted a new release from Diamond Art Club, she knew it would be Fox Wisdom. Yes. That, I mean, I've had a couple of paintings from Diamond Art Club in the past. I have had the odd painting that I've picked up and I do have one that I actually need to unbox. It's still in its box. Um... I have had a few and while I, I really like all the colours that I have, all the paintings, sorry, I'm getting mixed up because I'm thinking about this painting. Um, while I've enjoyed all the paintings that I've got and I like all the images, I think the Fox Wisdom is the first one that I've sort of looked at and gone, I really want that painting and it was very similar with this tree one I actually got this on an email from Star Raw and it stayed in my inbox I was like I really want that one of course Star Raw didn't sell out anywhere near as quick Diamond Art Club does so I think I'm gonna have to wait for that one to come back into stock whenever that may be but yes, it's probably the first time that I've ever seen one of their new releases that I've been. I definitely want that one. Um, the one I've, I've recently got and will be unboxing soon is one of their newish releases. It was on a very slight pre-order when I got it. Um, but that was sort of purchased for... Um, because I like the image, but not because it was, I need this image in my life. Whereas that Fox one is very much, I need the image in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I do need to get that. It's a bit like Mr. Quackers. I was very excited with Mr. Quackers as well. Um, and then last question while I finish these up. The last question is from Sharon. Uh, I love that you're growing and turning your hobby into a business. Thank you. Uh, do you ever think that you'll get a canvas printer? That's not in anything that's in our plans at the moment. There are uh, quite a lot of diamond painting companies out there. Getting the likes of a canvas printer is potentially taking the business to a different level than than, than what it is at the moment. Um, I like the fact that the items that we sell and, and do are created by us primarily. Um, they're our own designs. It's a little bit different, a little bit more unique. Even, you know, diamond painting trays, which you can get anywhere, our design is 
unique. Um, and I kind of like staying down that route, not trying to, I mean, you know, I think it would be amazing to have a diamond painting company that does the canvases and stuff. But I do think that the market is getting a little bit more saturated. I don't think it's got anywhere near enough sellers yet, you know, to give us the full variety. Um, but yeah, I don't think that's a route I want to go down at the moment. But as before, never say never. Okay, so I've popped the last, I'm just going to move the computer out of the way. I've popped the last of those. They're actually the purple ABs just starting to show up there. But we've got a line from top to bottom. And we're only on the eighth. It's amazing what, deci what the decision maker app will decide for you. But we can see all the parts of the tree. And I'm guessing eventually the decision maker will allow us to do the rest. We shall see what tomorrow brings. Um, do keep asking your questions, please. That is, I'm loving the fact that I've not quite reached the top of the questions and gone, what do I, what do I talk about now? So do keep them coming so that I've got things to talk about. And thank you for watching and I'll speak to you all tomorrow.